here finally rainy day and everything but welcome very much to public access i gave you a quick rundown on public access where mm -hmm. more of my attention has been over the years mm -hmm. and i apologize i haven't been paying much attention to i was a fan of marshall McLuhan, and i look and see that the whole world's going multimedia so i'm more interested in multimedia than in what linear what uh, McLuhan would call a linear medium like mm -hmm. radio or print but so forgive my ignorance and so forth. And let me introduce you. We'll get into a conversation about uh, communication. And welcome, welcome in the audience. We have two guests here to talk about communications, with particular reference to the current situation at the radio station WBAI, which is uh, familiar to a great number of the audience, but might not be to some of the audience. And we're going to be talking about that. And I'd like to introduce them, uh, and then we'll get into a conversation about the current state of affairs as well as some of the history of the unique institution. And on my far left is, um, is Steve Brown. And Steve Brown's an entrepreneur. He's also a uh, activist. And he's on the board of the, uh, of the entity that deals with WBAI, as I understand. Correct. And uh, he's, uh, a, we've had conversations on the phone. We had a lot of mutual friends in the old days and that sort of thing. Welcome, Steve. Very, very, Thank very you. Thank nice you very much. You. I have to correct you. Yes. I am, I am no longer an entrepreneur. Uh, many years ago, I uh, divested myself of all my profit-making uh, entities, and I now devote myself, uh, for better or for worse, to uh, helping uh, people get along a little better than they might ordinarily. Well, some entrepreneurs do help us get along better, I would suggest. I think that a lot of entrepreneurs, Ted Turner helped to hell. Like the That's cable true. television, he was an entrepreneur. And, you know, Bill Gates was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Ray Kurzweil, That's I don't think entrepreneur is an. Uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, mean uh, it was a, a no, bad it's word. a derogatory term, if that's what you're insinuating. No, no. What it meant that it was that it, at when you're an entrepreneur, you devote uh, most of your time to entrepreneurial activities and making money. And uh, now that I now okay. that I am not, I devote most of my time to to helping losing organizations money. losing money. <laughs> yes, to helping organizations uh, get their message across, raise funds, increase their membership, and yeah. generally annoy the government. And you can apply a lot of the lessons you've learned in the entrepreneurial enterprise to what's needed yes. there, because the same issues are prevalent in terms of both sectors of the society. Anyway, glad to get that all straight, and uh, thank you. Really, it's really good to have you on the set, and I look forward to being in touch with you in the time ahead. And on my immediate left is Lavarne Williams, and I, she's a uh, she's on the board, as I understand. You help me out. Okay. Financial. I'm actually I'm not on the board. I was on the board, but I was on the board through the end of the of 2000 or through the beginning of 2008 really uh -huh. the end of 2007 but no I'm no longer on the board I'm on the uh, the chief financial officer for Pacifica Foundation okay. right and I'm, right. I'm located in Berkeley California right, where the whole thing got started with Lou Hill 60 right. years ago we yeah. celebrated the anniversary on April the 15th of this year really Is yes that right? yeah well, which anniversary the 60th 60 oh, the boy, 60th anniversary boy. of Pacifica so that would have been right in the face of the Second World War or, or well, just after. 49, right, yeah. after the World War. You know, Lou Hill, he was a pacifist, he and was. I believe he was in jail at some point for refusing to, to fight in the, uh, in, the, in the war. And he actually, um, after then, he just observed in terms of radio and the commercial aspect yeah. of it, and he had this grand idea, along with others, mm -hmm. to do... Uh, uh, community supported. You yeah. get your funding from the community yeah, the and from the people that the listeners support. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he he was a he was a. And when we say the war, it comes tripping me up. Right. Tripping, there's been so damn many of them and everything. But what we're talking about is the Second World War, Ex exactly. when the whole nation, 99.9 .9 as far as the eye can see, were totally in support and united behind that effort to defeat fascism in Europe. Right. And he took a stand as a pacifist. Absolutely. That was unpopular in the face totally. of great popular support. Now, if he had taken that stand in the Vietnam War, the national attitude would have been somewhat different. Yes. But things seem to have deteriorated in terms of general support 
for the war making efforts of the United States governmental process. Right, okay. right. And the reason why I say the war is because my father fought in the war. He I was know. on uh, Guam. Mm -hmm. So he tells the story. My father, of course, was a black man, so he mm. was a chef then, mm. and he, he didn't, at that time, that's where you were actually tracked into the war. So he was, he was a chef, he was on Guam, and after then, I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas, mm -hmm. so uh, there's a naval base there, yeah. so I think at some point he was, when he left the, the naval, the Navy, he was in, there in Corpus Christi, so, yeah. and, he was a, and he was a chef after then, he owned part of a restaurant at some point, and he worked as a chef, and, um, and we have a book on yeah. the war, so it's like, yeah. I still see it as the war, right, World War II. My dad to refer to the war as the war in 1918. <laughs> right, so, you know, right. They come with such exactly. alarming regularity, right. and I had to get draft, and the thing on the draft, in Vietnam, or even when I, I'm older and everything, but I was drafted <coughs> into the United States Army, I had to go, you know, we don't Absolutely. have to do that now, yeah. but I mean, that makes a big difference, and that was an effect, but I was drafted, it would have been during Korea time, you know? right? and I think maybe uh, there's a good chance I was one of the worst soldiers <laughs> ever in the history of the United <laughs> States Army, Okay. because I, like I said to you on the phone, I'm almost pathologically anti-authoritarian, <laughs> I believe in democracy and people working things out, and I used to try and explain to the sergeants, couldn't we do things more democratically? <laughs> and right. he, they would just say, shut up and get in the right. But the thing I wanted to bring up, I don't mind, it's a sidebar and everything, but you called him a chef. Yes. Now, when the army, you could call the, 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 uh, the, the, the people who were cooking the food, we never called them chefs. Well, after the war, my oh, father was, was a, oh, yeah, he was a cook, oh. no, he, yeah. was a, he was a cook oh, in the cook. war. That's he was a more, cook, yeah, right, but right. afterward when he was uh, employed, after he had left the Navy, he, he was, was a chef. chef, exactly. It's a great art He was trained, form. absolutely, yeah, my really father was really yeah. good. Yeah, okay, well fine, and you're uh, Berkeley based? Or I'm Berkeley based, no, I, well, I'm Berkeley based, but I'm here working as the acting general manager for WBAI. We've gained, we've had some successes since I've been here over the month, and that includes it, we concluded a fund drive and we'd like to thank the listeners for your contribution to the fund drive that yeah. we exceeded the on-air goal which was 800,000 and we brought in 800 and over 839,000 dollars so yeah. uh, we'd like to thank the listeners thank the subscribers thank the staff right. and thank everyone for for keeping faith that BAI will do the right thing that's a measure that we will be successful yeah that's a measurable metric as they say they can be brought up and, <laughs> and everything like they had the same sort of thing going often with uh, public television you mm -hmm. know public television does have other support corporation for public broadcasting and that sort of thing but they still do depend upon listener support in order to keep the system going and mm -hmm. so that's something th the only place where you don't have that it's in a different realm it seems to me I may be wrong in the history of communications, either listeners supported, where they have to send in money to do it, or advertising, which motivates most of the media, both at all levels, um, is uh, public access television. And then also, that's blending with open source com commercial uh, commu c computer developments now and so forth. But um, they have that on public television too, where they have drives where they have everybody send in money, and you have that as well. Right, and, and I must say that the, the Pacifica Foundation also receives money from the uh, Corporation for Public Broadcast, and oh, they do. it's about 10%, I believe. 10%. Right, and we also get some funding from for grants and foundations in terms of helping us. And, and, and as the uh, acting general manager and as the chief financial officer of Pacifica Foundation, I welcome anyone who would like to give us or give information or who's interested in helping the foundation through grants or through foundations. We, we do welcome that. You sure. know, we are mission driven, so we, we, we would like to take uh, grants and foundations from which most of them are, have a, have a, a not-for-profit. And it's not, you know, we're not non-profit. We want profit too, but our goal is not to make profit. So it's not for profit. Yeah. But, you know, we welcome making a profit right. too because yeah. we have to have reserves. The yeah. foundation and the radio stations are, are, are funded mm -hmm. through these listener fund drives mm -hmm. and so it's cyclical so yeah. when you get the funds in and then you slowly deplete it then you have another drive mm -hmm. so in order to like even that out we uh -huh. we we always try to have a reserve so that if we get near the near the point where you know there there are issues in terms of paying the rent which it definitely would which it was at WBAI 99.5 yeah. FM they were four months behind in the run and the rent and just say in the month of May we just paid 
you know, I've been like acting general manager since the beginning of May. Mm -hmm. And the month of May, we paid February and March's rent. Mm -hmm. That's how far behind. And this month, June, we have to pay uh, April and May's rent. Mm -hmm. And then we'll finally catch up uh, at the beginning of August, because in July we'll be paying part of the rent from June. Right. So we're we so that's ha that happens. Yeah. So that's why we we are we are cyclical, but we do ask for funds, and that the foundation will welcome any any group that would like to help us in terms of fundraising, in terms of foundations, in terms of grants. And again, we are mission driven, so we want to accept money from those types of sure, the foundation and grants. That would be really good. Exactly. I mean, the foundation and that kind of stuff. And if you could get that in, in the mission statement was Lou Hill was the um, ran against the grain in terms of the society. So the station calls itself progressive. Yes. And it's one of the one progress where there could be progressive voices and progressive voices from Teddy Roosevelt up to the present and so forth generally take exception with the power structure that exists and are, are critical or can be critical in some of it in terms of the uh, um, assumptions by which the society is organized. And those foundations are usually the result of companies that are very embedded in the historical condition whereby they've done very, very well. And I would think that if there's something that's really critical in a crucial sense, they wouldn't be uh, wanting to support something that is critical of the base by which they operate. So you don't want to have to kowtow to the corporations or to the plutocrats who have all the asset ownership by and large, if you understand what I mean. Absolutely. It makes it difficult, I would think, to get much corporate support. Well, it's, it, well, most corporations to have their foundations, and their foundations are not-for-profit arms of these corporate groups. So mm. uh, when, the, when their mission, uh, regardless of the initial source, because let, let me just kind of you know, talk a little bit about in terms of foundations. Like, you know, if you look at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and some people say, well, you know, we don't want to accept money from them. Well, you know, but they buy Bill and Melinda, they buy software. But so they're willing to give their money into the commercial part mm -hmm. and, and allow them to, to, to accumulate these funds. Uh -huh. And some of these funds, this profit, they, they channel that into these not-for-profit foundations. Uh -huh. So, you know, you're, 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 you're willing to participate with them on a commercial end, but yeah. you're not willing to participate with them on their uh, non-commercial, right. you know, not-for-profit, yeah. mission-driven yeah. uh, end. So, a conundrum. Uh, exactly. One well, of it's not, it's not, still it's not really, it's not really okay, a yeah, conundrum. Up, what, yeah. what they're, I would not straighten you out. No, please, what, please, what, I'd what, like to understand. What, what people like that say, and quite rightly, mm. is they're not against accepting the money, they're against accepting the implied conditions that That's might true. come along with it. So that uh, a, a, an organization like BAI, which by the way, does not look for profit, it looks for surplus, which then goes back into expanding the mission of the organization. But what it, the money it would accept from a foundation, no matter how well intentioned, should not be operational. Because if that that's foundation withdraws its support for any reason, you die. It should be ad hoc for a project or a capital fund or a particular facet that can be turned off in a minute if the funds dried up without in any way impacting the normal operations yeah. of the radio station. Yeah. And that, that would be fine. I wouldn't care if, if uh, who knows what, gave money to the station no matter where they got that money if the station was not bound to do anything with it that they wanted. But what happens with foundations is that organizations start looking over their shoulders to see if the foundation is going to like what they do, even if the foundation says nothing. Things operative when right. you've got advertising, yeah. too. They yes, to absolutely. 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 And so you start absolutely. distorting your purpose and your mission. Mm -hmm. But if it's only a, a, a uh, an ad hoc or a one-time donation, mm -hmm. then if they suddenly decide, for whatever reason, they don't want to give you any money, say, okay, and you continue as before. Yeah, well, I see, you said 10% may become corporation for public broadcast. That, 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 exactly. That's public sector. Uh, and then is the bulk of the, because and we should clear, because most people probably viewing will not know about WBAI as much as you're focused on it, of course. But it's part of a network called Pacifica that Lou Hill got started back in 48. Huh? Right. 49, I guess. 49. And then there's five other, there's four other stations, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Washington, and... Houston. Houston. Yes. And it's a network of progressive yes. uh, programming on the radio and uh, you're the you're you're the financial officer for the Pacifica Foundation, right? And is that the entity that has responsibility for the whole network Absolutely. and all five stations? Ab and and plus how are the lines of authority set up in terms of that 
whole uh, array of uh, five stations, and then how much participation by the people outside of that bureaucratic structure is there in terms of the way the day-to-day -day operations of the various stations operate? Well, thank you for asking yeah. that question, because in terms, it's set up so that the five stations report their general managers for each of the five stations, and mm -hmm. we also have an archives, and we, we really would like people to, to get onto WBAI.org so that you'll find information about, there will be a link to the archives in terms of getting uh, programs that we have done it in the past that are very, uh, you know, very historical type of programs and that uh -huh. you would really be interested in hearing. But the general managers report into the, into the executive director of the foundation. Okay, and, and there's a board, I presume. And the Pacifica Foundation yeah. does have yeah. a governing board. Yeah. And when you said, how do the people get involved? Well, the yeah. people get involved because we, the board has, is now that does elections. And the, in fact, we're in the election period oh, now. The election and, for the board, right? For and, the and for the local board? station board. Local and station And the listeners board. Okay. and and the mm -hmm. listeners are the ones, the ones who uh, to be a member of the of the station. It's like t it requires twenty five dollars per year, and that would make you a voting member of the the listeners of that board of that station. Or three hours of volunteer time. You can do it for you. Make up twenty five dollars for three hours. Yeah. Yes. That's an eight forty. Eight dollars. Right. Yeah. Aside. Well, yeah. well, yeah. what we'll have to do, we'll have to address that. We'll yeah. put that as before the board that perhaps you know three hours. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're also talking about, uh, you know, three quality hours, and people can usually fulfill that by by coming in and answering the phones for the for during the fund drives. So we are in that election period, and the election period uh, in terms of of people who would like to become members of the board, it's been extended to July the 15th. This, you're talking the local. But the local the board. The and then the local the board, board, and how the, how the national board is actually elected is that the local board meets in January or toward the end of December. Of each five stations. Of each five station, uh -huh. And then the local board elects their four representatives to the national board. And one of those representatives, and the, the staff also has an election during this time. So the staff actually, it's cer currently set up so the staff actually has a representative, and in fact, a voting representative on the national board. So they have four, four elected and one representative of the staff. Well, no, they're the four. four stations, 20 people on they're, the board? They're, they're, four pe or they're four people. And one of the pe one of the individuals well, one it of the would be is staff, staff, is a staff. Okay. And then you have, we have a vast network of affiliates over a uh, hundred and no over almost 200 affiliate stations mm -hmm. so they at the, the affiliates group they also nominate two people and those two people are also on the national board I see. and as the chief financial officer I'm more like an ex officio member of the of the national board mm -hmm. so that also means that we have very we have in-person meetings four times a, a year mm -hmm. then we have uh, usually monthly meetings conference calls mm -hmm. and based on you know what the issue is it would maybe more than that so mm -hmm. that means that I'm I'm <coughs> also uh, attending these I'm on the phone for like these three hour conference calls Calls. So and the you're next. Working 14 hours yet. Well, that's what I said. And then. I was working 16. Well, yeah, well, 14 plus. Yeah, but she's very modest. It's yeah, not, that's true. She's not right. efficient. It's like 20. I'm not efficient. <laughs> no, I but, waste all that time. But what, so what happened is this, and she's not going to say it, but mm -hmm. I will, is that WBAI for the last four or five years has been in deep trouble. Um, it had management and a board that had its own ideas of what to do, but put the comp put the station into actual insolvency and bankruptcy. Well, that's there, there that, was, that, that, Yeah, there was there that's was um, disputed. Well, it's not disputed here it is. We have the figures. Yeah. Well, we the, can, we, no, can well, just, we can talk about it. Okay. I well, can tell you that through April year to date. Okay, through April well, of year. Of course, April yeah, part yeah, of yeah, that I management. See, we got a political yeah. thing and so you got your side and his side. No, no, but we yeah. have we have facts. Yeah, We're not this is not just a matter of I used to be an academia. You ever go were you an academia? Were you, I, you I, ever like a professor? I went to school. No, I've Did I've you ever go? I was one, and I wasn't very interested in it at all. But when the for the professors, like the professors of anthropology and the professors of sociology, would fight like tigers about who the hell is going to be the provost, <laughs> I never paid any attention. It's a bureaucratic infighting kind of thing that goes on within any institutional structure. But ultimately, and that's what's it has, going on it has, now a, WBA. It has no, a very no, great I don't effect. Think so. If you're going to want to say it's a done deal. That, no, no, it's, 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 it's not a show. fight. Yeah. And I hate to argue with that's you, okay. but, but, the no, fact, do. <laughs> but the fact is that, that every, and here, it, here are facts, okay? Yeah. Every year for the last four or five years, WBAI's fund drives 
with raising money have failed miserably. And the station has yes. been losing listeners and, and losing members. This is on the record. We Why have that information. Why have you been losing members? Well, let me, let me finish. That's uh, a, it gets back to programming, I'll, I'll give you, I would think. It's, it's certainly a big <laughs> yeah, part so of it. So that gets to politics. About what should be no, several, no, several no, years no, ago, no, you see, oh, well, there is political money. infighting. And several yeah. years ago, uh, Bernard White, who was a former program director, fired, arb yeah. arb arbitrarily fired uh, one of the station's biggest fundraisers and most popular broadcasters. This is a personal matter, hmm. political matter. And he fired him without consulting the board, without consulting the listeners. Thousands of listeners protested, and he didn't care. Mm -hmm. And they left the station, and they took their support with him. Mm -hmm. he, he harassed and, f and had fired a, a prize-winning investigative journalist from the station for his own personal reasons. More listeners protested. What would but be the personal reason? I, I mean, you know what? We are not, I we cannot, we cannot you say. Can't go into this that. is, Harold, here is, here is the mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernard White can go out and claim that he was fired because he was black, even though he was replaced by a black man. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he can, he can claim that, well, that, um, let me finish, please, because I have black, something to say there's, here. There's, there's, there's Malcolm X and there's a step in Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. Well, there was and Malcolm X. Are, are you calling her step in? If you're going to go to the corporate side, you're going to want to get it on the side of the corporate But, Harold, but, but. But his claim was <laughs> that there's a, a, a cabal of white racists at the station who are taking over and going to fire all so black that's people. What he's saying, he's he going around, he's been saying that for a long time. Whenever anyone criticizes his job performance, he says those criticisms are racially motivated. Now, well, how do you argue with that? And I know some women who think the only thing that really matters is the damn patriarchy that's controlling everything, and they will fight like the devil to say but that's what. And that's what's the trouble. I can't get a definition of what the hell is progressive. What is progressive? I mean, because there's so much dysfunction it, in the world it society, matter. and everybody's saying, Howard, "Well, my issue Howard, is the important one," and they all focus Howard, on that. We're focusing. And if, that, if that comes out in the program, we're then not you're focusing. Lose a lot of views. We're not focusing on progressivism here. Oh. Bernard's idea of what's progressive and mine and and Levine's do not differ. They don't. The, no, oh. the station. Everybody at the station believes in the same ultimate goals of where, where the society should be going, equal, equality, justice, economic um, uh, uh, welfare of people. That's not the issue. The issue is control. And the fact yeah, is it's a political that thing. Yeah. No, it's more than political. It's, it's a matter of being able, as one of our friends say, paying the rent. And, and, right back to business. The, and management was simply the incompetent. In, in the extreme, well, the, and, and they were hiding their incompetence. And there's a procedure at the board, at the level of the national board, for how that would be achieved if you're going to just, I understand. You mean, me, how, I'm not familiar. But, but it's they just that you wave it off as political. They let go of uh, Bernard and, Hope and other people, Don DeBar and other people, and that no, was done within the, no, within the scope of the way WBAI set let up Let me the correct, authority. let me correct you. Okay. Uh, Tony Riddle is no longer the general manager. Tony Riddle works for the foundation as the national development director. Don DeBar uh, did not report to the news department. Don DeBar was doing news headlines that was okay. not sanctioned by the news department. He had no training from the news department. I understand the news department actually asked him about meetings so that they could uh, address the, the quality of these news departments. And my position as a general manager is that news for WBAI 99.5 FM only comes through the news department. Now there are other depart are there other programs that you know they'll do women news or, or certain news and and, th and that's not but that's not news headlines. Hmm. And that's what uh, Mr. Uh, De Barandinas was doing. And that's not what I and it was confusing to me as a general manager and it was confusing to everyone else. But before I go on, let me just say that yeah. as a general manager, I cannot comment on anyone who who is no longer with the foundation, but I can tell you about Why? because legally I can't and Why legal? I mean I understand you're saying my daddy was a lawyer I live in Rhode Island. what legally means that you can't comment on that why because mr. mr. white can sue me for revealing personal information about him well, and so I cannot put the foundation at risk to liability concerning anyone's termination yeah, with, with the and, and yeah. truth is no defense it's actually a liability Truth is a many splendor thing. <laughs> and one person's truth Mr. is another Mr. person's truth. Mr. Channer, Mr. Channer, yes. if you reveal personal information about an employee, true or false, mm -hmm. you will lose in court. Mm -hmm. And if it's true, mm -hmm. you will lose more because 
it doesn't matter whether it's true or false it matters that you have no right to reveal it so bernard white are can claim let me finish bernard white can make any claim he wants about why he was fired and the station is unable to respond with the true reasons but you have to understand that when a station gets rid of its top management there has to be a reason and it's not stupidity that that the reason is and but they're not allowed to reveal those reasons in public and that's a problem if bernard white says okay i unseal the records you can say you can reveal the now, true what, reasons what, what, we would welcome it and we would talk yeah, about it all what, day what records are you talking about what records you know this is like back to mccarthy or something i mean what what records no. are you talking about that are so sacred i mean you know this is uh, not sacred or in the face of it the law is what i'm talking about you've got a, a legal claim the for law not being simply able to talk seals the the discussions about somebody's um, uh, job performance and the behavior at the station uh, in terms of, of whether they were prudent or reckless, whether they did or did not harass staff, whether they behaved in appropriate manner. These are discussions that are sealed legally. Why? Because I, that's asking, the law. No, I, no but it's not law. enough to say it's the law. I'm trying to get the philosophy behind the law. What is the I, philosophy I, behind it that you can't bring forth the evidence I, by which you let somebody oh, go? No, 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 no. Because the sport no. they you can, or something. You can do it. You can do, you it, can do in it in court. private. In, in, in exactly no, court. Why can't it be done within the procedure? In the public? With a procedural matter, yeah. Within the procedure by which it's done. You could say, you can't well, do it in we're going to fire the guy because we think he's bad and we can't I, reveal the me, evidence that let proves me, that he is or something No, no, no. Let me... If you were firing, if you were firing a, a politician, you could do it. You cannot do it in, in the private sphere. Let me give you an example. Okay. What if you fired someone because he was an alcoholic and mm -hmm. he was falling down drunk all the time? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that anybody was. You can't reveal that because that hurts the person and it's it's not... It's a privacy thing? Yes, of course. Oh, okay. okay. Of course. So it's got constitutional... Of course. Constitutional. It's constitutional. If I said yeah, that we're firing an employee it. because he harasses women or harasses men mm. or... or <laughs> does dope in the bathroom. Mm. That could be true, but if we reveal that, he could go and say, yes, I did dope in the bathroom and I harassed little girls, but if I'll you reveal in. that, I will sue you. And he will win. Why would he win? Because that's it's the law. That, that would be the a law. legitimate reason for his dismissal. Or you yes. Could, well, well, people are being absolutely. dismissed with but his lawsuit, fights all the his time. Lawsuit and would one not, group takes over. And his lawsuit would not be that he was unfairly dismissed. It would be that his private information was revealed and he would win. Winston Churchill once said the, the law can be an ass. It seems to be but that it is the, the law, law can really get in the way often of, uh, of justice and things like that. Does it seem that way to you? That it's stacked? No, in this case, okay. in this case, you have faith I, in the system. Yeah. I didn't say that. I said oh. in this case, <laughs> the law is meant to prevent individuals from retribution and harassment by employees by revealing things. What if, what if somebody um, is an alcoholic, but he's recovering. What if he was an alcoholic five years ago and he's recovering? Mm. You can reveal that out of malice. The same way that that uh, uh, Cheney and Scooter Libby revealed information about uh, 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 Valerie they're Plame. Leaks. They're called leaks. Yes, of the course. Yeah. They reveal that. Mm. That's a crime. Mm. And Scooter Libby went to jail for it. Well, he did find that Cheney's still talking loud. Yeah, of course. And so, it usually it doesn't apply to the big shots. No, it doesn't. But yeah. but the fact Unless is that in, the, in this case in this case in this case these employees can say what they like and the station is unable to respond unless they if Bernard White or Tony Riddle came on and say you know what open it all up let's discuss it we'd be delighted to explain to the public why they were fired mm -hmm. delighted but right now it looks as if the station is hiding something mm -hmm. and we're not the minute they say we waive our rights to privacy. We'd love it. We'll go out and sing an opera about it. Wonder if they could get, okay, okay. That's something I don't know. My daddy didn't teach me. I don't know if it was okay. there since such prominence when I was young. I don't know. But the fact changed. is, I was getting back to this woman's modesty. The fact is <laughs> that when the when the, the management at the national board finally changed, it mm -hmm. was, as a matter of fact, beholden to Bernard White. But mm -hmm. that management changed, and a new executive director, new chair of the board, and a new majority. All the the local boards elected their new representatives and sent them to the national board and they said, oh my God, what's going on? WBAI is pulling the whole network down hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars because they are mismanaged. And mm -hmm. the national board yeah. took action and mm -hmm. sent a team here mm -hmm. with, with this woman mm -hmm. and two or three others mm -hmm. from, from California who were brilliant. There mm -hmm. was uh, uh, 
now program director is, is one of them, but he whipped the fund drive into shape. He changed the procedures, at the, which Bernard White was in charge with. We were six to nine thousand dollars in arrears of premiums. That's almost well, a million dollars. Six to nine thousand dollars isn't no, a lot. No, six to nine thousand premiums, premiums in arrears. That's almost a million dollars. Okay. Over a year, and mm. people send in their money and they expect to get their DVD or their recording or something, and they mm. don't get it. They're not going to send in any money That'd anymore. That would be like a crazy Eddie sold something right. and didn't get the product. That's correct. And when we you left the correct. crazy Eddie right. pitch. We, yes, when sir. we left the office, <laughs> when we left the office this evening, there was a, a subscriber there, a listener, and she had not received her October fund drive. And finally, what we have a person in charge now who's who's getting those premiums out. She's mm -hmm. gotten over six thousand out since she's been in since about yeah. January. Mm -hmm. And and the that's person Yvonne, that's there, that, right? that was Yvonne Singh, and we're getting them out now. But the point is that they were not there. And we just had a person. We always get these calls. A person just was there. We said hello to her. I introduced Steve as a board member. Mm -hmm. And she had not received her premium. And we had, she had sent, she had received a premium from October. This is things that So occurred. this is, this is what happened. And, and let me just say the other part of the fact on this is that through April year to date, since I am the chief financial officer, WBAI had about 1.6 million in revenue. That was 300,000 worse than budget. Now, they're, they're, so you, if you look at their net income, net loss, a net loss of over $300,000, which is a half a million dollars worse than the budget. And they're all, WBI 99.5 FM is about a million dollars they owe the national office. And the, and the reason they owe this is that the national office had to cover some expenses for them, that WBAI, each station gives about 19.5% of their listener support to the national office in order to maintain this, this network as a, as, a, as a functioning network. You know, we do have uh, an office here, a finance office primarily. And, and the, the previous board had basically decimated the national office. And BAI, had, there had been no response to any of the issues and the downfall and uh, the decline of BAI. In fact, I was on the national board. Let me just say, I was on the national board. I was the treasurer. And the, one of the reasons I chose not to run again on this, on this board is that BAI was having these problems then. And the solution to this working group, which included management here at the prior management at BAI, their solution to BA's, uh, BAI's problem was to have a party. Well, okay, what you've got here is a lot of things, a lot of evidence, some you can't, I, and I'm sorry, I can't understand <laughs> it all, but it I'm seems sorry. to me you've got a bureaucratic infight between different groups and so forth and that kind of thing, and um, uh, you hear different things from the other side, but there's been a change, and we asked about the procedure. You can't go into all of that because of privacy issues and law and that kind of stuff. So there's a thing going on. So the, the thing that goes on, uh, go at another level or try to think at another level. There are people, as you are well aware, uh, when uh, Dan was the director of, Pro of, uh, of uh, Pacifica and Amy was there and, uh, and, and Bernard, he's a stalwart member for a long time, there was what was called a coup back in 1899, right? And there was a resistance to the coup at the time, and the people who are looking at what you've done to the managers that's been in place for a long time at WBI are calling it a coup, and it's not legitimate. That's their claim. And at that time, when they went through that, they were saying they've made it, it's history, it's done, and so forth, but it was reversed, as you will recall. Amy Goodman was rehired. She was going on to great stardom. Dan Coughlin's our executive director now. He went through that kind of thing, and there are a number of people who, and then so if we put it into a thing, if you look at it as a pattern, the details are there, we understand they can be brought out, but it's a thing where one group is gonna take over from another, okay? That's the way a lot of the people see it. Now, um, what is the opinion of the population at large? You can't get the whole picture, you got one group. It would seem to me, we skirted the issue, it might be over how come people aren't supporting the station it might have something to do with programming. It might be that too much programming is about black people. It might be there's, not an, there's too much anti-Zionism or something so people aren't doing it. There might be reasons of programming. Don't want to discuss that. But at a certain level, what do some of the big guns in the progressive movement, as it were like, what is their attitude toward what's gone on over the last few months during this time of economic, uh, it's like a foreclosure movement coming to foreclose something when there's economic trouble. Well, let me finish. There, uh, <laughs> that kind of thing could be seen that way. And you've got people who are sharp, 
And you got people that are not particularly sharp in a business sense. And sharp people, Icon likes to take over in a hostile takeover or something, and they will claim the business is uh, run by people who don't know what they're doing. You gotta have efficiency, you gotta have that, all of that. So, but what are the people who are icons of the progressive movement? We can't seem to define it, it's so variegated and so forth. But one of them, I don't know, it's Amy. Amy Goodman's like a superstar. Now. She's like Joe DiMaggio and um, Babe Ruth rolling Can the I, wine. I, I, I know says, where you're, I know where you're going with this. Let me just say, she says, she says in this thing, the thing, she says, we're also dismayed by the recent firing of WBAI program director Bernard White. Every station management has the right and responsibility to hire and fire staff they feel are appropriate. But the removal of Bernard, as far as we can tell, and this is the thing, as far as we can tell, lacked the basic due process any employee is entitled to under the law. Given Bernard's decades of devotion and dedication to BAI, the way he was treated lacked basic human consideration. That's from Amy, Amy Goodman uh, and Juan Gonzalez. Can I? And then now, one other thing, um, if you want to address, how, she, how it, she gave a 10 minute piece about laying out the details of why this thing had to take place. And so, and another one, another one is, uh, and it's in that accord with Amy, I want to play it, because it's a statement from another icon of progressivism, and that's, um, that's uh, Momia al um, uh, uh, yeah. Jamal. Can I, uh, can I say you something? I have, I have, I have, I want to make a statement. I have not heard that. It's, so it's, I, I will I have play it. We'll play well, it. You know, I, I, before, before he's you do that, what you've done. before you do that, understand something. You, invi you, invited, you, invi you invited us on. Right. And, and uh, I don't want to say <laughs> that you should let us talk a little bit more, but I do. Here's, okay. here's the fact. Fair These, the, uh, Amy Goodman, Mumia, they are icons of the left, and yeah. we broadcast them all the time. They have not a clue to what's going on they inside have the station. They, they have now, not talked to me. Amy, 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 right. Amy, 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 gotten all these details. Yeah. Amy yeah, and exactly. Bernard have been friends for 15 years, yeah. and they have supported Mamiya for as, as many years. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But now, when your friend comes over to you and says, I want you to sign this, I've been badly treated. Okay, I'll sign a dotted line. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. The fact is, we have just, one of the things that, that this woman has done mm -hmm. is taken Amy's show which Bernard would not allow to be broadcast more than once a day. Uh, she's now put it on at 8 o'clock so people can hear it on the way to work, and at 9 o'clock so people who can also hear it. This We've been pushing for that for a long term. Bernard was the one who stopped that. He didn't want to put some of his friends, he, because he was on that show. Yeah. He didn't want to take himself off the air. Well, that was uh, way back we, when. We, no. Not way no, back when, no. recently. No. Um, and and I, I must say, with with some respect that you also have no idea what's going on. I know, I told station. you I don't. Okay. Yeah, I'm just so like a citizen, but Mo that's and the Mumia, way the citizens Mumia, are perceiving uh, God bless him, has been, in jail, has been in jail for the last several decades. He has even less idea of what's going on. But anything Amy says is fine with him. Anything Bernard says is fine with him. Well, it's also, they are friends. Fine, it's also fine with a whole lot of people. Who don't know what's going well, on. Well, that's always the claim. Carl Icahn will say when he comes in and takes over, okay, you know, like a narrator, uh, they just don't know the details like this. We can try it out. Well, well, I, it well, I'm, trying to, give you, I'm trying to give you know. the, the, the details. Facts, and, that, and one of the details which I sent to Amy because I responded, I responded, well, it's, 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 there's, yeah, the, the basis, fact is that yeah. we just paid March and February's rent in the month of May. Mm -hmm. And why was Congratulations. that? Congratulations. Well, you know, it's a tremendous, it's, it's a tremendous a great thing. Fundraising and it, and it, thing. You're very it, good at fundraising. And it, well, this was during this was during March and, and during during May. We we if we finally paid February and, and February and March's rent. So why wasn't that done? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't why hadn't it been paid? Well, it would be what would it be incompetence. It would be lack of uh, uh, the wrong programming, uh, lack of capability, and all the reasons that people go and make a change. Okay, because and the other people are not running things right. Maybe they're not covering the issues that are really important. That's why they got no leadership. All these fights go on just like they do when you're selecting a provost to the university. And WB it's a bureaucratic infight. WBAI and is not a standalone perception unit. Perception of the perce of perception of the public at large who listen to Amy is important in terms, or, or do you think it's all over? It's no. history. The, the coup's been successful. Amy is there's a very no coup. You don't call there's it a no coup. coup. The change. Uh, that, you know. WBAI is not a standalone unit. WBAI 99.5 FM on the dial is part of the Pacifica Foundation. The, board, the, the, board, board, has, the board has a responsibility for the health 
of each one of these stations. Did they claim the same thing back in 1890, uh, 1999? I'm glad well, you brought that up. Yeah, oh, at that time, go. okay, look, at that time you had a self-appointed board. The listeners had been paying the expenses of these stations for 50 years. They had no voice in its operation. The listeners did not elect the national board or the local board. They were, they were self-perpetuating. And what happened was, the, the, and I fought very hard to get rid of them, they were, they were mainstreaming, they were trying to mainstreaming, mainstream the network. They had fired many, many progressive, meaning alternate broadcasters, and the listeners finally rose up. And after a year of demonstrations and lawsuits in which she and I were both prominently right. involved, we exactly. got rid of that board, and the judge made a decision that this, the, the network was to be not listener supported, but also listener governed. And the listeners were given the right to elect those who would run the national and the local um, uh, apparatus. Each local station would have its listener members elect the board, and that board would then elect the national board. Okay. So when you had a coup then, you had a democratic movement to remove undemocratic uh, control. <coughs> now, the argument is ludicrous because the, the local boards were elected by all of the, 85,000 people received ballots to elect representatives to the, to the Pacifica uh, local boards which elected the national boards. 85,000 people received those ballots. And the board now, which is acting on behalf of the foundation and the, local, and the stations, are acting on behalf of the people who elected them. There is no coup. Okay, when, you, when, you, you obviously. Exactly. When, 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 well, the, when the, when the, the general yeah, manager removed the program the director, she did it crazy. because she said, my God, and she's only talking about numbers and facts. But yeah. there are other reasons for the removal, yeah. which she is legally prohibited I from, from yeah, talking right. about. So that in makes it in really addition, it for you. does. Yeah. It yeah. Makes in it addition, so the day Bernard yeah. comes on and says, "I waive my privacy rights," we'll be back well, and we'll, here, we'll, Bernard, we'll, we'll, we'll sing an opera. The lawyer that up. And in addition, the transmitter rent had not been paid in, know, two, in two months, and so they, no, and this is this is been doing the worst economic depression since we could have we could have been off the air. Mm. And, and, and during this yeah. worst economic well, period, then why and, and come in terms to of town this, this and, worst economic and get a fund condition, drive. Right. right, exactly. That's the I point I'm making. Right. We, we made, we exceeded the goal on the fund drive in the worst, on worst that. economic uh, recession worst, that's really that we have ever experienced. So there must be a lot of people who are in support of what I you have. I have letters. I have letters. I have checks. I have letters. I have checks from people. Who, when we announced this change to uh -huh. Democracy Now! Yeah. at live at 8 a.m. on 99.5, mm -hmm. you know, people sent me checks. They yeah. said it's about time. In fact, when we came in here into these studios, there was a person there, and we talked. I said, Well, she was talking. I said, Well, what do you think of this? She says, This is what I wanted all the time that I can, that I'm now at work at the time I need to be at work versus like, you know, yeah, not yeah, being yeah, there. So, you know, like, okay. thank you, New York. And it'll be run and, efficiently. And it, will, and it will be run okay. at, at 8 a.m. live. Thing, let's give the voice to Mumia. He's in the death row and all that sort of thing. And Amy talked to him the other day. Oh, and let's hear I'm it. sorry. Would you repeat that again? Amy talked to <laughs> Mumia. Mumia yeah, about, about, about what's going about, on. About what's about going on at WAI. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. We've looked at the rights of Mumia Abu Jamal. Democracy Now! is the first national program to broadcast his commentaries from death row. It was four years ago this month. The minute before we were scheduled to go on air, uh, 12 Pennsylvania stations, all run by Temple University in Philadelphia, pulled Democracy Now! off the air, saying it was, quote, inappropriate to air Abu Jamal's voice. In the first part of today's program, we're going to turn to Barbara Ehrenreich and Professor Gwendolyn Mink to talk about President Bush's congressional address last night. But first, we're going to bring you the latest commentary by Mumia Abu-Jamal. Soon after the Prison Radio Project and Democracy Now! undertook, kind of years ago, Pennsylvania prison authorities banned video and audio taping and photographing of prisoners. Occasionally, afterwards, we were able to receive a call from Mumia Abu-Jamal on this program after he won a legal battle within the prison. They had first pulled the phone out of the wall when he was talking to us. But because of the ban on the videotaping, audiotaping, and photographing of prisoners, um, we were able to get this commentary by telephone line. The sound quality of the lines of two Mumia Abu-Jamal have become increasingly poor so we ask you to listen carefully. The former Minister of Information for the Black Panther Party, Dr. Christopher, once said, information is the raw material for new ideas. If you get misinformation, you get some pretty messed up ideas, of course. With late night lock changes and a phalanx of security guards calling the holes, the crew of WBAI-SN, the flagship station of the Pacifica Network, Begun. Popular veterans of the listener-supported station, like program manager 
Where's he going? How it, I'm, I'm very unhappy with what you just did. Oh, okay. that is from very 10 unhappy. years ago. That's, that's like from That's 10 years ago. What Amy ten Goodman ago. did as a friend of Bernard yeah. is play something 10 years old without telling people that carefully it's ten years that it's 10 old. years old. And I think that that's going on at the station. That's outrageous. And I'm sorry that you... <laughs> I fell for you that. <laughs> ...magnified it by doing it again. That's not today. That's 10 that years old. Exactly. That was, that, refer that was not referring to what's going absolutely on. Absolutely not. No, absolutely, absolutely not. not. And she did. She wrote that's Harper the most for dishonest Yard, journalism. Amy, wherever you oh are. Oh, my God. That, that really is oh, low. Oh, my God. Well, wait, I don't understand. Then help me because I made the mistake. You did. And so I was and so every now. person no. on the air. It no, was going on the same thing listener. back 10 years ago. That, that, this was the original, same thing is not going on. This is the original coup. This is nonsense. Okay. <laughs> and she did that. That's no. No, wait a minute. Let's make, let's make sure. No. I, 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 I yeah, am I going to you take were... the blame because I did it well, wrong. Well, she first well, takes the blame no, because she minute. committed I, no, some me, dishonest help journalism. Help me, help me, help me because okay. I don't know what the hell I'm talking in, about. In 2000, I heard that thing in 2000, and I thought I'm going to tell you what it okay, happened. In 2000, this happened. In 2000, the National Board came down and fired all these people. That's when they fired Dan. Yes, they and, fired Dan, all Amy. the rest of those people. And yes, and yeah. they harassed Amy. And, and I fought that with okay. time and with money and with effort, and so did she and many other people. Well, can I okay? just, can, just uh, 
briefly, during that time, I was the 50th. We were celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Pacifica Foundation. My yeah. job at KPFA was the 50th anniversary consultant. We were fundraising to do that. So when when they removed the remove, they didn't renew Nicole Savalia's contract, and then they actually shut down the station. Well, our committee actually shut down too because there was no reason to fundraise. So at that time, the Pacifica National Office they called me in next door and they told me that. Uh, you know, since I was no longer doing that, my services were no longer needed, and I just told uh, the person who told me that that uh, I gave her a copy of the contract and that she would hear it from my from my attorney. I didn't hear from them until my contract okay, ended. Okay. So I went from, as I say, yeah. I went from fundraising to hell raising. Yeah. I was against all of this. We are an elected. We are representative people. We have boards. This is from. That's. 2000. 10 years ago. Yeah, 2000. 2000. 2000. 2000. Yeah. And that's what happened. And yeah, that's, well, that's, a, that's exactly what we were all elected to prevent happening again. That's why the listeners okay. now elect these exactly. people. Exactly. And well, for Amy Goodman to do that, I, you know, good journalist as she is, this is the lowest no, form of journalism. Minute, wait a minute. If wait she broadcast that minute. today. Mr. Goodyear really discovered vulcanization by a mistake. He left the pot on overnight and he discovered how to vulcanize he rubber. He didn't discover mm -hmm. anything. Those people in Brazil were, were okay, <laughs> pulling okay, rubber, okay. pulling out rubber but for the, the last century. This may be a blessing century, in so this Mr. 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 Goodyear thing. discovered so, yeah, nothing. I know. Anyway, anyway, the point <laughs> being is I don't want to put Amy on the spot. Because uh, what I thought that that was did uh, she broadcast now. that now? I don't know. Where did you Where get did that? Where did you get that? I got it off the internet. But when? when? How? What was it? I recorded it this morning. As it, was this current? If, if it wasn't a current broadcast, I apologize to Amy. Well, but this I is want to years apologize old. to Amy, and I want to apologize to you. I and want, I want to well, we need to tell the listener that I don't that is want not Amy to be blamed. Okay. No, and, and I, I don't either. My stupid well, mistake. I, okay. I don't want okay. Amy. I don't so want I don't Amy want to be to be blamed. Amy's right. great. Well, well, I agree I with you. You agree with that? I agree. We all agree. We don't. We all agree. But. But, but I if thought that. you re I, you rep I, now I mistake because you represented to me as something that she just broadcast. Well, I thought she had. I thought, well, okay, <laughs> here it is. You see, folks, it's my Boy, mistake. That's doing serious. Something this ten years in a serious. Because, and, and you I said, and you said to me, an icon of the left, Mumia, is now. C c against me. Against us. Against me. I'm saying, he, what does he know no, about the station? Exactly. Now, nothing. He's been yeah. in jail for 20 years. Well, so I will talk to the person who does the, the Mumia broadcast, Noelle Hanrahan. I uh, will call her. I know her personally. I think she was on the board. I will call and talk to her. That must have been something from 10 years ago. It is 10, it years, is ago. 10 years ago. I know it because <laughs> I knew it sorry, is. folks. I'm really sorry. I fouled up. I thought it was from today, and I figured it was, they're doing a repeat and everything. And so I fouled up, and I apologize to you, and I apologize to you, and I apologize well, to you. Amy. But the question Absolutely. is still there. And I don't know. What question? Well, what question? question? What question is still there? That, which Every I time did. you fire someone, it's a coup? That's um, always what the person who fired claims. Right. Oh, I belong in my job. Yeah, it's true. And I can and only say... Did, back then, 10 years ago, the thing that was done was reversed. The thing that was done. They tried 10 to years fire ago, me ten years, years ago. <laughs> By the way, yeah. what they did eight years ago was legal. It just wasn't right. And so the listeners rose up and said, We're not going to allow this. And we had a court suit, and the judge said, this foundation should be governed by the people who pay for it. And he changed the constitution of this organization and mandated elections. And that's what we've been doing. And now the listeners are doing this. So to say that, that this, this general manager now of BAI acted undemocratic and illegal when she was empowered by the listeners to bring this station back to health is nutty. That's the point for you to make, obviously. And this, yeah. Now, there are people, Don DeBarn, these people are doing something and trying to call, recall that 10 they year ago thing. You say of it's a completely different situation. Of it's not relevant. Of course. And so forth. And but Mr. Don DeBar is not an employee of the station. Well, I know. But and and no, one t no one banned him from the air. I certainly didn't. I, I told the produ executive producer okay. that the news department will be in charge of all news headlines. Right. But particularly in that, in that, in the way he was doing it, that yeah. he would, he had never, he had not been trained. His his newscast did not meet the journalistic standards of well. the news department. And in fact, let me just continue. We have actually on it. We have brought someone on, and we'll go through a hiring committee later. But we've brought someone on to do to do as a news researcher, not just to do news headlines. We have mm -hmm. brought someone to do news, uh, do news research, and can help with to show up both of our main programs, yeah. both Wake Up Call 
and talk back, which yeah, are see, great. Well, so talk back with Hugh Hamilton is a great program. Yeah, yeah Hugh and, Hamilton, and, I've done programming. With right, this guy and that, from and if this person, right, and this person, and this person will help both talk back the programming, and wake up call. Right, and this person named she. I talked to her today. She accepted her name is Gail Walker, so okay. she will be with us to do that. And I okay. think she brings quality to this program. Thanks and for to coming wake in, trying to straighten me out. I'm terribly sorry I ran something <laughs> from ten years ago. It's a thing that happens to me because I'm so damn disorganized. But anyway. I'll help you as long we'll as I'm here. I'll help you, you with your thank organization. You, thank you. Thank you. Uh, will the programming change on, on Pacific or WBI as a result of what's going on? The, we have. We only got a couple there are, minutes. There are left. many good programs on BAI. There's a we're keeping programs of course, you could put on. We are keeping them and we are improving them. We're giving them better resources. Well, let, let me talk resources. how Steve is on the okay. board um, as a general manager. We're we're looking. We're She's we're, the boss. we're we're She's looking. The boss. <laughs> we're okay. looking at. We're looking at all the programs. We, we're trying to shore up really good program, and that's what I've done since I've been there. What defines real good program? Well, things that the listeners support. You know, we we hear we we hear listener support. He said he said it. I think ten years ago, you're going to try and turn it into uh, national public radio. Make it never. Soft. I never. Make it soft. No, that's no, no. That's, that's, why, that's why. That's why we're. That's why I, I brought on it. Right. Again? That's okay. why I brought on no, the it was research. true then. Right. Mm. Eight exactly. years ago, it was true. It's and not we, true we now. We fought a long battle. But if you do go public at National Public Radio, you probably get oh. some more grants and stuff. You we're not, we're not, not looking at that. Not no, okay. we're not interested okay. in that. Okay. No, okay. no, cool. we're we are trying to, and that, that program, and let me tell you another program that's coming up that we've been able to, to bring on since I've been there. Chuck D is going to have a program on WBAI. I don't know Chuck D. I know you don't. Well, I don't know you don't, but I'll tell you who he is. He's with Public Enemy. It was a rap group, Public Enemy, I, I can't Fight the Power. What saying. Oh, I know you don't yeah. because we we have various audiences because we are diverse yeah. and we, we we do have this audience that that do that audience does know who Chuck D is. Yeah. So he's going to have a program. It's coming up in August, mm. and uh, he and that's you know we're excited about that. Robert Knight. Like yes, you referred I know to Robert Knight. Robert yeah, Knight will be to, he's going to come back to WBAI. And he's got, gonna, got, there's an event coming up this Friday night. Doing a live broadcast. Used to be the health guy, Noel. Gary Noel. Gary, Gary, Gary Noel. Noel. We, I looked at that thing you yeah. told me. He's we've talked, we've he's talked on, with he's on, with he's on KPFK. Yeah. He's on WPFK. Yeah, there's a lot of alternatives right. there. Look, right. what she's done also is arrange to show you how the program is going to explode. No, you heard of Noam Chomsky, right? Of he's course he's I've heard okay. everybody's he's heard of he's, he's, he's in an election. He's tomorrow night. a momentous speech tomorrow know, night yeah. at, at the Riverside Church. We're broadcasting it live on WBA. Great. We didn't Are have there that before. Here we have, yes, yes. of course. Yes. Look, do you think we took, it, do you we think took think out ads in the nation to promote that great. broadcast. That's really good. That's what the new the I would love doing. to see things intellectual because I'm an intellectual. Well, that's well, listen to 99.5 FM. As intellectual before. Do you think Amy will be asked a question? And if she does ask a question about what does she think about what's going on at WBAI, she'll answer it? She probably will answer it. What do you think, how she will answer or Mr. Chomsky, or if you get, or if you get back to Mr. Uh, Mal I in can't. the, so there are Mimir. bigger voices in your I board. I wouldn't presume in terms of the, na the whole yes, national audience and the world audience, for, and for, there may for be for an Mr. opposition Chomsky. to the idea of what you think is good. For